I thought I'd do a little video about using bullet physics in Maya. Bullet physics is a kind of uh, physics engine which is actually open source and freely available um, and it's built into a lot of 3D programs. So if we were doing a tutorial about this we could do it in Maya but we could also apply a similar approach in Blender and other software as well. Um, so Bullet basically allows us to create objects and give them a mass and speed and things like that and through doing that we can simulate what we call rigid body systems. So let's set one up. It's actually pretty easy to do but before you can use Bullet um, you have to actually turn it on. It's not on by default in Maya. So to turn it on you go up to your um, Windows menu here down to Settings Preferences and select Plugin Manager. When you go into Plugin Manager, what you want to do is you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff here. What we're looking for is the Bullet plugin. So the easiest way to do that is just to type Bullet into the search field up here, and you'll see there's a couple of different Bullet things here. There's one called ABC Bullet Bundle and one called Bullet Bundle. The one you need to have checked for this tutorial is Bullet Bundle. So make sure both of those are checked. If you check Loaded, it means it will load Bullet straight away. And if you check Auto Load, it means that next time you run Maya, it will be loaded when you start. Once those two checkboxes are on, you should find, if it's worked, that you'll have a Bullet tab up here. And you should find also that if you choose the FX menus up here, that you'll have a Bullet menu there as well. Okay, so if you don't have that bullet menu or when you don't have that bullet tab there, it's because you need to go into your preferences, plugin manager, and turn bullet.bundle on. Once you've got that set up, we can go ahead and start doing things. So the way bullet works is we create um, polygons and then we tell bullet what that polygon should do. So if I create a just a normal plane here, and I'm just going to change it as I typically do down to just a standard plane and I'm going to make it 20 by 20. This is going to be my ground. Without a ground um, objects are just going to float around in space which might be what you want but not what I'm trying to achieve here. Once you've got your um, plane there we need to tell uh, bullet that it's actually it actually should be included in the physics calculations otherwise it will just be ignored. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave that there for a moment. I'm going to create a second object. Um, in this case what I'll do is I will create a cube. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that cube and I'm just going to move it up here. Alright, so what I'm going to do is, the really, is a really simple thing. I want this cube to be influenced by gravity. So when I press play, I want this whole thing to animate as though both of these objects um, are influenced by physics. So first of all I need to select my plane here. These two buttons here are the ones that are really important to us at the beginning. This first one here lets us, um, lets us turn the selected object into an active rigid body. This one here lets us turn it into a passive rigid body. So the difference between an active rigid body and a passive rigid body is that a passive rigid body stays still. So something like the ground, for example, this plane, it stays still. It means it won't be pulled down by gravity. So we'll come in here, we'll go active. Okay, we've made that an active one. And now we'll click on this one and we'll say, we'll make this a, oh, sorry, that's a passive one. We'll make this one an active one. Okay, so once you do that, um, you'll see that both of these end up with these white outlines around them. And when I press play down here, without me having to animate anything, you can see that block falls as if gravity is affecting it. Now you'll notice that no keyframes have been created, so if I move my timeline back, weird things are going to happen in the vision here. <coughs> and depending on how complex your um, animation actually is here, other weird things may happen. Sometimes reversing it like this doesn't work at all. So we just re rewind that and press play again. Okay, so that animation will go for 120 frames. And you can see there's nothing more going on after about frame 40. So um, let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let me uh, start off. I'm going to delete this guy. And uh, let's create a, um, a bunch of blocks. So there's a couple of gotchas that I'll um, come across as I do this, and, and they'll, they'll help you with your own work. 
um, hopefully. These are common mistakes that people run into that I'll deliberately run into as I do this tutorial. So I'm going to create a block here and I'm going to just resize it. I'm going to make it thin and tall, kind of like a, a, like a building block. And I'm just going to move it up, make it, maybe make it a little bit taller. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to pop this just on the surface there because it's a building block, so it might be helpful to go into a side view if you want. Now you'll notice there's a gap here between my block and the ground. And really I can keep moving this closer and closer and closer and eventually it'll move over to the other side of it. Now the problem is that if I make this a physics object and it intersects with the one underneath it, it will bounce off it. So let me show you what I mean. And I can show you another particular effect that happens here too while we do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this guy and I'm just like I did before, I'm going to turn it into a active object. So I'm going to come into my bullet menu up here. I'm going to make it an active object. That means that it's now going to be, um, it's now going to experience gravity. Okay, so when that falls, that's fine. Now, what, watch what happens if I go back and undo a couple of steps so that it's no longer a physics object. And so now if I press play, you see it's not falling anymore. Um, and now if I start it actually already inside, so I'm moving it so it's sort of through the bottom here. And now if I make it a physics object, an active physics object, you'll notice that it sort of bounces up like that. And that's because when I pushed it through the bottom there, it's intersecting or colliding with the ground. And that means it's like it's like kind of being pushed out of the ground as it's bouncing off it. So we, we want to try and avoid um, objects overlapping each other. Otherwise, they'll bounce off each other like that, sometimes quite dramatically, which we'll see in a sec. Okay, so let me um, let me go back and undo everything again. And we'll just move our block to where we want it. Now when you're doing um, these things and you're building something, it's really important to do your building first and then turn them into physics objects. So don't create a physics object. So we shouldn't make this an active object and then duplicate it a number of times. Make the object first, make your, your building first, and then turn, turn your entire building into a physics object. We'll show you how to do that. So here's my first block. This is just a standard cube because I undid the um, physics application that I put on it before. And I'm just going to go Control Duplicate, Control D to duplicate. And I'm just going to create two blocks like that. And then I'm going to duplicate that block and then just rotate it. And I'm just going to rotate it by 90 degrees. And then I'm going to move it up and across a bit here and then down a bit. Now again, at this point, I need to be a little bit careful that I don't push this block inside the other blocks, right? If I make these blocks overlap, then what's going to happen is these blocks are going to push off each other. So I need to make sure there's a bit of a gap there. I don't want it to be too big a gap, but I do want a gap there. And I'm just going to align these. Okay, so now I've got um, a basic kind of building block set up. Let's um, take those blocks and control D to duplicate them and move them up to there. Okay, again, leaving a small gap between them. And now I can go shift D and just duplicate that again and maybe again. Okay, so now I've got a little building. Let's go back to our perspective view here and you can see we've got a building there. Now, <clears throat> the next thing I need to do is I need to turn these into physics objects. But, you see, I've mucked around with these objects a bit and they have a number of different transformations on them. You can see they're translated and they're scaled and one of them, at least, this one, for example, is rotated as well. All right, so these values are not all set to their defaults. Similarly, these objects all have histories on them. So if we go to the attribute editor here, you can see that pcube 7 has a few different things in its history. Not too many of them at this point, but before we turn them into physics objects, it's really important to go back to your polymodeling tools and click this button, which is freeze transformations, 
which will turn all of these transformation values back to ones and zeros. Um, and also this one, which is delete history. So the way we can do that is we can just select everything. Um, so we could just come in here and like select all those guys like that and then just go freeze transformations and delete history. Now I'm not going to do that yet. I'm just going to show you what happens if I forget to do that. So this is a, a gotcha. This is something that often goes wrong when people are trying to do this. So we select all these things. Now to turn these into physics objects, we don't go through them one by one. We can actually come in here and click this button here and that will turn all of the, these, these objects here into one sort of set of rigid body objects. So we'll just click this one and you'll see that straight away they all turn back into cubes. So what's happened here is that Maya's kind of forgotten about all of the transformations that we put, put on there. So it's forgotten about the scales and all that sort of stuff and it's got the rotations wrong and all sorts of stuff. So that's happened because I didn't freeze the transformations and I didn't delete the history. So I'll undo that. I'll just und hit undo on that a couple of times and what I'll do is I'll go back into here and this time I'll click freeze transformations you'll see all these transformation values go back to zeros and ones and delete history and now once I've done that if I come in here to um, my bullet engine and I make them back into physics objects again you'll see they don't turn into little boxes anymore now they stay as, as like a little tower so now if I press play here, you'll see that my tower kind of settles. Now that dropping effect we saw there at the beginning, that's because my whole tower is there's little gaps between each of these things, right? Which I deliberately left. So what would happen if I didn't leave those gaps in there is all of these little elements would push away from each other and that would multiply up the tower so my whole tower would kind of fall apart it would blow up which looks kind of cool but isn't the effect we want um, I'll show you how that, what that actually looks like uh, let me just save this um, and it's so I can come back to it in a moment because this one's working okay and it's got this basic bullet okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back out of here a little bit back to before they were all physics objects okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna move them all down a bit so they're all overlapping just slightly with the ones below them so this is like if I'd constructed my tower and I hadn't left space between them Okay, so I've sort of crunched them all. They're all overlapping. So now if I go through, I'll just quickly, because I've moved them around, I'll go through and I will go back to polymodeling. I'll just remove, just um, reset their translations, their history, delete their history. And then what I'll do here is I will make them back into physics objects again. So there we go, physics objects. And now when I press play, you'll see that my tower kind of blows up which is kind of cool, um, but not really what I want. Okay, and that's because all of those elements are pushing against each other like we saw before. So, that's why we leave gaps between them. Um, all right, let's go back to the one that was working okay here. All right, so there's my block, and if we run that, Okay, that one's just falling through the floor there. Let's try that again. Okay, sometimes with physics simulations, you'll find weird effects happen, and sometimes they'll happen the first time, but not in the future times. It's always a good idea to rewind, and then make sure you always play from frame one, because sometimes if you load up a file like I just did, okay, so we'll do that again. We'll open that scene, go back into here, open. Okay, you can see that uh, we're on frame 44 here. That's where I saved it at. And so if I press play now, it's kind of like it hasn't remembered all the stuff that's happened. It hasn't calculated all the stuff that's come before. So when I press play, it won't calculate things out properly. What's important is for us to go back to frame one first and then press play and then we'll get the proper animation happening. 
Okay, so um, there's my tower. Now let's say I want to knock my tower down. Um, let's say I want a ball to come in and knock my tower down. How do I do that? What we do is, uh, first of all, we're going to need a ball to come in, all right? So we're going to create a ball. And we're going to move this one over here. And let's make this ball just sort of fly across here and knock out these, these bottom pits so the whole thing falls down. Now, I haven't added any physics to this ball yet, so it has no impact. Now, because it has no physics on it, if I just stick it in there like this and I press play, this tower doesn't care about it. It has no impact on it at all. All right, so it's not, it's just ignored because we haven't made it a physics object. So what I'll do is I'll move it over here and we'll make it a physics object. So uh, let's come back into our bullet settings here. We'll make it an active object. Okay, so you can see it's got this like cube around it here. That cube is its bounding box and it's used for working out collisions. Now you can see that with, a, with these guys, their bounding boxes will be stretched around them and because they're, they're they're rectangular prisms, a bounding box works fine. But for a sphere or an object that's not um, a box shape, we need to give it a different kind of um, collision space. Otherwise, the collisions won't always work. Like if something just hits the corner of this box, then it will be considered to be a collision. So what we need to do is we need to be able to edit that a bit. So let's um, first of all come in here. We'll come in and, and um, have a look at our attribute editor. And you'll see that we've got uh, this thing called bullet rigid body shape. And if we pop this open, you'll see that there's some bits and pieces through here. Okay, so what we can do is um, with this particular sphere, what we want to do is we want to have a look at some of these settings here to change them. So you can see this collider shape type set to box. If we change this to sphere, what will happen is that now my so I had to reset that back to one. Now it's a sphere shape that's over the top of my sphere. So it'll automatically calculate the right shape to, to enclose my, my object. Um, I can choose other shapes too. A capsule is something that looks kind of like a pill shape. Uh, so like a rectangular prism with rounded ends on it. Um, a hull is a more complex shape that's harder for bullet to calculate the collection the collisions with so it will slow things down but it will actually give you um, an accurate um, collision shape for a more complex object so imagine you had a, had modeled a spaceship or something like that you would want to use a hull collider on that and obviously there are planes and cylinders and so on here too okay so the other thing we want to do here um, is you can see there's all these other um, settings we can put in here. So mass is how heavy our object is. It's how much matter there is in it. Um, you think of this as kilograms, let's say. So each of these blocks here, everything by default is one kilogram or one mass unit. Um, if this ball flies along and it, it's got a mass of one and it hits another thing with a mass of one, it's going to have less of an impact than, this, than if this had a mass of 10. One of the things to take into account when you're doing physics simulations is that when objects collide, um, often you don't want to have things going more than an order of magnitude or like 10 times the difference between them. So if we made the mass of this thing a thousand, then the amount of energy and smashing power that happens in there will be so high that sometimes you get weird physics effects. So try and keep these values you know, relatively reasonable. So friction, restitution is how bouncy the object is when it hits something. Uh, friction is how much uh, objects slow down when they're in touch with each other. Um, angular damping is how fast the object slows when it's spinning. Um, linear damping is how fast it slows down as it's moving. So, you know, you'd maybe increase that if the object was flying through water or something other than that. Um, and center of mass is where in the object the mass, center of mass is. In a sphere, it's going to be dead center, which is the default position. Okay, so uh, without going any further into this, um, we can press play now. And what we're going to see is that our ball just falls down like that because our ball is now being affected by this physical world, but it has no velocity. We want it to fly along sideways, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to our um, 
Uh, we're going to click on our sphere one. And you'll see there's a few more uh, rigid body options in here. There's a translate, rotate, polysphere. You can see all this, this kind of stuff in here. All right, so that's how we get at these things. And you can see that there's underneath here, we've been looking at, we looked at um, collider shape sphere and we looked at these values here. There's also this other thing here, I'm going to fold these up, initial conditions and forces and impulses. Okay, so initial conditions is where we can set what this body is like when the, when the simulation starts. So we can give it an initial velocity. This tells us, this tells Bullet that this object is, starts off moving. So this is like you know, kilometers an hour or meters per second, if you like. Angular velocity is how much it's spinning. So if we give this like um, 10 here on Z, it means it's going to be spinning around its Z axis at 10 rotations per second or whatever the, the value is. You can, you can play around with the values to get a sense of what they do. Forces and impulses are basically like um, giving the object a push. So this is saying the object's already travelling at a certain speed. This one's saying the object's still, but give it a big push so it will start moving. We're just going to give it a, um, an initial velocity here. And we're going to, because we want it to move along the z-axis, right? So this is our z-axis going in this way. So we want to move it along the z-axis. And we want to move it along the z-axis. We'll give it a, a value of, um, might give it a value of, uh, say, we'll start off with 10 and see how that works. Okay, let's give that a go. We'll press play. And you can see that now it moves. And you can see that it's kind of cool. Not only does it move, but when it comes into contact with the ground, it starts rolling. All right, and also when it hits that block at the bottom there, it sort of pushes it in a bit. But it hasn't hit it hard enough to really uh, do any damage. So we could do a couple of other things here. We could make it move faster, or we could increase its mass. Both of those will have effects on, on how it collides. So let's um, make it move a little bit faster. So instead of 10 here, let's rewind that. Instead of 10, let's make this 20. So it's going to move twice as fast. Let's see what that does. Nah, not that much faster, right? Oh, reset it. Hold on. Back to the beginning. Let's try 20 again. OK, make sure you go back to frame 1 when you change the values. OK, there you go. Faster, and now it's knocking it down properly. All right, so that, that, that's kind of cool, right? That, that's nice. That's working more or less what we wanted. Let's have a look what happens if we change its mass. Let's give it a mass of 5 instead of 1. OK, so let's go 5, and we'll, press, we'll rewind it. 5, press play. OK, so it's kind of collided with it a bit differently. Our mass has gone back to 1 again. You will find some of these things are a little bit annoying from time to time. Okay, so you can see now that the ball weighs more, it has a bigger impact when it hits. That's because a 5 kilogram ball moving at 20 kilometers an hour, it's got more energy in it than a 1 kilogram ball flying at 20 kilometers an hour. What if we make it 0 0.1? Okay, so we're going to make it 100 grams instead of 1 kilogram. What's that going to do? Okay, so it hardly has any impact at all. It's like a polystyrene ball comes in, hits it, makes no impact whatsoever. Let's make it 100 kilograms. What does that do? Right, smashes right through like there was nothing even there. So you can play around with some of these values. But like I said, try to keep these values down to something reasonable. If you make them too high, so we'll make this a one ton and and we will make, we will give it an initial velocity of 1000, then what you might find is that, right, it just moved, see how fast it moved? Just like zoomed out of the way and nothing happened. And the reason for that is that it moved so fast that between two frames it kind of had part already passed through and so no collision was detected. So making these values too high is not always a good idea. Let's make it let's move that down a bit. And you'll find that there, sometimes you will get like weirdnesses happening. Like blocks bouncing around a bit too much more than they should be. 
when these values are high. So only make these values as high as they need to be for the purposes that you're, that you're trying to achieve. So here, a five kilo mass is probably plenty and the speed of 100 might be what we want. It still does pretty much the same thing, but we get a more predictable result there. Okay, last thing um, with bullet physics is that um, when you're uh, putting together um, an animation like this, you'll notice that no keyframes have been set down here. Um, and that means that if we want to go ahead and render this, what's going to happen is that it's not actually going to um, necessarily, see how I, as I go backwards here, it's like not actually putting it back together properly, like it sort of is, but sort of isn't. Okay, so it's not really predictable. Um, and one of the problems is then that, you know, if I go up to a particular frame and then try and render this out as an animation, it's not necessarily going to work. So what we need to do is we need to tell Maya that we want to store keyframes for each of our objects um, so that the whole thing can be kind of remembered properly. So to do that, what we do is we reset right to the beginning here and we go to our animation workspace. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our key menu here and there's an option called bake animation. When you go bake animation, what it will do is it will take it, every frame, it will record a keyframe for all of our objects. It's basically like going hand by frame by frame animating our objects. So we can come in here to our bake options and we can make some um, we can make we can change some of these values around. Generally speaking, you can leave them as defaults. You can change some of these values to um, change the speed of that that it gets recorded. Remember, we're baking at real speed, so sometimes you want to change these around. But pretty much the defaults are fine. Click bake. It'll go through. It'll run the animation really fast, and you'll see that you'll have a whole bunch of new keyframes put in. There's tons of keyframes in here, one for each frame. And now when we do this we can see it like on any particular frame we can see what the effect is. Sometimes it's still a bit funky in the way it works. It's like it doesn't exactly work right but it does mean now that if I go ahead and try to render this then it's going to render correctly. So that's basically it for um, a basic introduction to bullet physics. There's a lot more to bullet physics than this. We can do stuff with um, soft bodies, which are soft things like blobs that can move around instead of hard objects or rigid bodies. Um, and we can also, um, we can also simulate other things uh, like cloth and even rag dolls. So we could get like a little body with some bones in it and we can just drop it around the place. That's a little bit more advanced than I want to get to for, for this uh, particular subject, but um, feel free to play and as always, the more knowledge you can demonstrate that you have worked out for yourself, the better.